Okay, in this video we're going to look at the dot product, its definition, and some of its properties. So let's say we have two n-dimensional vectors. Generally we'll be working with two or three-dimensional vectors, but you can define this generally and it's pretty easy. So a, which is a1 to an, and b, which is b1 to bn, the dot product of a and b, which we'll denote by a dot b, is a1 times b1, in other words, the first component's multiplied, plus a2 times b2, so the second component's multiplied, all the way up to a n plus b n. So notice, the output of the dot product of two vectors gives you a scalar. Okay, so now let's look at this proposition. So the dot product of a vector with itself is its length squared. So that's actually really nice because that, that gives us a new way of calculating the length of a vector by taking the square root of its dot product with itself. And then notice the dot product distributes over vector addition. So we have a dot b plus c is the same thing as a dot b plus a dot c. And then finally, a dot b equals b dot a. So let's look at a couple of examples first, and then we'll maybe prove one of these things on the proposition. So if we have 2 comma 3 dot 1 comma minus 5, so what that will give us is 2 times 1 plus 3 times minus 5, so that is 2 minus 15, which equals negative 13. Okay, good. And then let's do maybe one three-dimensional example. So let's do minus one, four, seven, dot, two, minus one, uh, three. So let's say that. So that's going to give us minus one times two um, plus four times minus one plus seven times three. So that'll give us minus 2 minus 4 plus 21. So that's 21 minus 6, so that will be 15. So that's the dot product of those two. Now the next thing uh, we maybe want to do is prove one of these. So let's prove uh, 1 here. So because this is maybe the most useful. And so what we'll do first is set um, a equal to our vector a1 to a n. And notice that's going to make a dot a equal to a1 squared plus a2 squared all the way up to a n squared. Because what we do is we multiply the first component of a with itself and so on and so forth. But now notice that this equals the square root of a1 squared up to a n squared quantity squared but that is exactly equal to the length of the vector a squared okay great so we've proven number one here but now notice that allows us to also write the length of a vector a is equal to the square root of the dot product of it with itself. Okay, good. So here are some preliminary results about the dot product. So I'll erase the board and then we'll look at another one. Okay, so here's an important geometric realization of the dot product. So if theta is the angle between A and B, then A dot B equals equals the length of a times the length of b times the cosine of theta. So notice, you might think that this has to happen in a plane for this to make sense, but given two, any, any two vectors, they define a plane in n-dimensional space, and so you can define the angle between them by the angle in that plane. And so the upshot of that is that we only really need to look at these vectors living in a plane because in fact they are living in the plane that they define. So let's sketch up a picture here. So what's going on here is we have this vector A and then we have this vector up here B and then we have this angle right here which we will call theta. Okay and the next thing we want to do is define this or put this vector in here right here which completes the triangle. And this vector right here is the vector A minus the vector B. 
So how can we see that? Well, minus B will take us from the terminal point of B to the origin, and then plus A will take us to the terminal point of A. And now we're gonna apply the law of cosines to this. So the law of cosines will give us the following. So it'll give us the length of A minus B squared. So that's the um, side opposite this angle is equal to the length of A squared plus the length of B squared. So that would be the two rays that are defining this angle minus twice length of A times length of B times cosine theta. Okay, so that's what we get. But now what we're gonna do is use this property one in order to express those lengths as dot products. So let's see what that gives us. So that will give us a minus b dot a minus b. So that's the left hand side. Equals a dot a plus um, b dot b minus twice the length of A times the length of B times cosine theta. Okay, good. So now, but notice, uh, we can FOIL this guy out, and if we FOIL this guy out on the left-hand side, we will get A dot A minus 2 A dot B. So we see that we get a dot b with a minus sign, b dot a with a minus sign, but the dot product is commutative, which we haven't checked, but that's easy to check, and then plus uh, b dot b. Okay, good. So we've got something like that, but now notice that's going to be equal to this uh, right-hand side, and now we can cancel a bunch of terms. So notice uh, we can cancel this a dot a with this a dot a. We can cancel this b dot b with this b dot b. And then we can finally cancel this minus 2 with this minus 2. And that leaves us with a dot b on the left-hand side. And that leaves us with the length of a times the length of b times cosine theta on the right hand side, which is exactly what we want. And I forgot to use this double notation up here. So that ends this proof. Okay, so I'll erase the board and then we'll look at a quick corollary to this proof. Okay, so we've got a super important corollary to this theorem, but before we do that, we need a definition. So we say vectors A and B are orthogonal, so you wanna think perpendicular, but the more general term is orthogonal, if the angle between them is 90 degrees. In other words, pi over two radians. So the corollary that we can build off of this definition and this theorem is that A and B are orthogonal, if and only if A dot B equals zero. So let's sketch the proof of that. Notice we know that a dot b equals the length of a times the length of b times cosine theta. But notice if a dot b um, is zero, then cosine theta is zero, which makes theta equal to pi over two or 90 degrees, um, or three pi over two, but we can interpret an angle one way or the other, um, and we'll always interpret it between zero and 180 degrees. Okay, so now in the other direction, if we have the angle between these vectors is pi over two, then a dot b is the length of a times the length of b times cosine of pi over two, which is zero. So that gives us both directions of this proof. It's pretty simple once we have this equation right here. Okay, so I wanna reiterate how important this corollary is. We'll use it all the t time as a defining property of orthogonal vectors. Okay, so this is the end of the video.